Believe it or not, this is not an ad. Most AI design tools give you designs that look like this, this, and this. They're not structured and not complex. And quite frankly, they're not things that really speed up our workflow. But there's one tool I found that changes all of that. Not only do its designs use components, but its designs are far more complex than its competitors. So let's take a look at Polymet. And if you want the full AI design workflow and to save 50% on Polymet, I'll put a link for our course down below. Let's rock and roll. Now, before I take you into Polymet, I want to almost give you something to compare Polymet against, okay? So what I did is I asked one of the other most popular AI design tools out there, okay? To build me, to build me two contact pages. And this is what it gave me, okay? Every, I can see here, everything's out of line. We sure we have this form on the left-hand side and we just have this basic data. But again, it gave me just two pages that are the exact same thing. And let's be honest, they're missing like an oomph factor. Okay, they don't look that good. There's no real like structure to the page. You know, there's not different elements floating around that will give it a visual appear and also translate additional information. Things like a map. Why couldn't that be on a contact page or contact cards with, you know, different with different locations, right? Those are all things that I would love to see AI build. Again, AI is meant for to speed us up, not slow us down by giving us a bad result. Even here in the different examples, sure, this version has buttons in the top right, but this one doesn't. So things are just inconsistent. I can't really take this and build a UI from it. I mean, well, I can, I just wouldn't want to, right? Because it's not giving me any sort of creative leverage. It's not helping me move faster. Even if we look at an example that Figma's own AI design gave us, right? This looks like a WordPress theme out of 2015, you know? Sure, I can take this and maybe do something with it, but it doesn't really speed up my workflow because I'm going to be spending more time trying to think about what I could add to this page to make it better, right? And that's where most AI tools, they're not that great is they give us sort of this rough framework of how a page should be. And they don't break things down in component by component and then piece together those components into a page. Like, look, there's no components here that these pages were built from, right? And as designers, that is exactly what we want to see. We want to see components built, structured properly, and then translated into pages, okay? So now, now that we have a baseline to what other AI tools are producing, let's now look at the output that Polymet produces and how they're structuring components, bringing those components, and putting them into UIs. Okay, so here we are within Polymet, okay? And what's one thing that we noticed right away? We see this big, beautiful button that says design a component, okay? Because Polymet's figured out that in order to build designs that people will use, you need to have components and your designs need to have structure, okay? If we look at that last example, there was absolutely no structure in the design because they didn't think about the componentry. They didn't think about how designers would use, use things. So you have this big, beautiful button here that says design a component. Now, if you're new to building design systems, go ahead, click that button and, and do whatever you want with it. But again, I hope everyone's watched your build a design system series. You probably don't need to click that button, but we're going to go ahead and we're design, going to design a page, okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to show you how Polymet builds out pages using components. And although they don't have a Figma integration, you, what you can do is you can take those components. You already have the structure in mind as to how that page needs to be built and then bring that into Figma. Again, we don't want to replace ourselves as designers. We still do need to do some work, okay? So what I'm going to do is just give a sim really simple prompt. Build me a contact uh, page. That simple, okay? Because that's what I gave the other AI tool. And as I'm sure you saw, the other result is what we got not that great. Okay. So I can see here on the left hand side, Polymet's thinking, okay, now look what is going to happen. Ready for this? This is where the magic of this tool is. Da, 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 da. It's building out components. Okay. It's building out the components first before it actually builds out the pages. So here we have a contact info card. I can see that that component's being built. Now I know what you're saying. Kirk gets a little slow. I would actually rather it <laughs> take time as opposed to rushing and giving me a result that's not that good, okay? I know I'm gonna to need to tweak it anyway, but again, I don't wanna to have to think about what I need to tweak. So here we have just this basic contact info card. What's the beauty of it? It's in a component state. Now, one thing I would like to see is that if each of these, or one of these was an individual component, and then it would group the variants of that component into one other component, okay? Um, so that's one thing I do still think that they need to work on is 
building out components in a way where a designer can look at it, trust that the structure of the components is right, and then recreate that design in Figma. So again, looking at this contact info card, I would love to see just one of these components. Sorry, skipping ahead. Uh, I would love for it to see just one of these components and then group instances of these components into one component, which would be this group of three, okay? So I can see it all. We also have a contact form. We have a contact map. And now it's actually building out the main layout. So for this really simple contact page, I can see that roughly we have, you know, three or four components. Again, we might need to make a couple tweaks, but I can see it's actually building the main layout. So it's going to combine all of these components into building an actual layout itself. So it's building out the layout. Now we have the header and also the footer. Again, this is one thing I also think that they should probably work on is even grouping out the navigation in the footer into different components, okay? Um, I know it's probably an unwritten rule that designers probably already have those elements somewhere in their design system, but if we're being consistent in terms of the components that go into each page, why not give the footer and the header also components on the page? And again, as the tool sort of grows as well, um, That'd be nice to see because then maybe you can make tweaks to those elements. Okay. So now we have the contact page. And it's actually going to build a prototype as well, which is nice because we can, if we look at what we see here, so navigate to the contact page. When I hit contact, now I have my contact page. So we have this header along the top. Again, I would even like to see this maybe be the component. Um, we have our different um, details, so our location, phone number, email address, business hours our form to send a message, the location, this is nice. Uh, and then we get into even some FAQs. So even things that weren't necessarily on the canvas view, the FAQs, they actually went out of their way to include anyway. Okay, so again, would still like to see FAQs be a component, but you know, beggars can't be choosers. So you can already see the difference in quality that the other UX design tool got versus this design tool. Okay, this is a structured page and sure it needs tweaking. But I can then take this structure, bring it into Figma, use my own components to build a functional design in no time at all. Okay, so now let's look back to Figma. And now let's look at a comparison between what we got with Polymet versus some of these other tools and even Figma's AI, where you can see with Polymet here, just look at the difference in quality and also detail and layout that Polymet gives you. Again, sorry for my bad screenshot, uh, versus another UX tool, right? Where on the other UX tool, again, we just have the simple contact page, just simple details. This is an actual page that is structured that you could see if you're an agency delivered to a client um, or just built for your own website as well. And even compared against Figma's own AI, like look at the difference. Again, this looks like it's a WordPress theme straight from 2015, but this looks like an actual page that's built by a designer. So now, now let's go ahead, simply build out uh, a couple components of these and do the magic of video editing. Let's do it in like five seconds. Okay, so here we are. Again, I would still need some refinement done to it, of course. But again, just to give you a good example as to how you can take a design that Polymet gave you, one that looks clean and is refreshing, and bring that into Figma, you recreate it using your own design system components in no time at all, okay? Instead of having to come up with looking at a screen, having to come up with different formats, what could go where, and in your mind, having to use your own creativity to play around where could an FAQ go, what could go at the top of this page. Polymet does a lot of that heavy lifting for you. All you really need to do is just bring it into Figma recreate it using your own design system. Next, let's go ahead and actually look at Polymet's iterations of componentry. Okay, and one thing you're probably wondering is if you're a design system designer, can you use this to essentially build your own design system in a sense where it shows you all the different atom components that go into your component? Okay, the answer for that is no, which is based off my experience. So what we're going to do is we're going to build uh, probably one of the more complex components, which is a multi-step navigation. So think of something like an onboarding where you have multiple steps that the user has to go through. You also might know it as a stepper. So build me a multi-step uh, uh, navigation uh, component, okay? Let's see what it comes back with. In an ideal world, what it would do is build out all the atom components. And as you probably saw in a lot of tutorials, and even for those who have purchased our collective kit, you're going to notice that all of our components have atom components. And those atom components go in to make one larger component. So if we need to make one small tweak to a specific part of the components, we can tweak that atom component and what that's going to do, translate that change to all of its parent components 
further down the line. Again, if that's confusing, I'd go watch some of our tutorials and you'll see what that means. But I can see here on the left-hand side is it's building a stepper uh, component, but it's also gonna add some specialized variants, okay? And this is gonna come in handy because I work with a lot of design system teams, a lot of design system designers, a lot of designers overall. And when they build the components, <clears throat> And one thing I always tend to see is almost like a creative block where they don't know, they get, almost get locked in to that initial component and think that's the only component that they need. But in an ideal world, you're going to have a bunch of different use cases for different variants of components, whether it's different styles, horizontal, vertical, there's a bunch of different things that can go into that. So I'm curious to see what it comes back with in order to speed up our workflow to give us the ideas as to what those variants should be so we can take that and translate those into Figma. <clears throat> Okay, so I can see here that it's given us stepper components. Again, it didn't break out everything into the atom components, which I would like to see, but it did give us some variants. So if we look at it, we have our default horizontal stepper. We have our outline variant. So with this one, it looks like the, if it's not selected, it's an outline. I would love to see a white background on this, if I'm honest, because again, this kind of looks weird if the line just going through it. We have a ghost variant. This probably wouldn't pass accessibility, but again, it's good to have as an option. Maybe there's some things that we can do with that uh, once we bring it into Figma to make it pass accessibility. Um, we have our vertical orientation, which is nice. And again, for each of these, I would love to see a vertical orientation because again, for each version, each variant for your horizontal, you're also going to want with your vertical as well. Uh, oh, and it's also building out me the multi-step form. Sorry, I jumped ahead there. So, <clears throat> and then we have uh, icon steps. So with no numbers, we have our icons. Then we also have our size variants. So if you're new to building a design system or you're not too sure the types of variants that you would need, this is going to save you a ton of time trying to think about all those variants. And it's going to give you a good sense as to what those variants should be. Okay, so it's built out the multi-step form. And again, kind of almost building us out a little page, if I'm honest. <clears throat> Just in that one simple prompt is building us out a step wizard. So I'm curious to see what it comes back with. <clears throat> Okay, so it looks like the step wizard failed and encountered an issue. We're going to see if it fixes itself. Okay, so while the step wizard is broken, it seems to be fixing itself. Polymet also gave us the step progress indicator, which is just another iteration on uh, our stepper. Whereas our stepper is more number icon focused, our step progress indicator appears to be more radio button focused. So although it could be its own component, you might also still like to have these in an actual design system inside of your stepper component. Because again, you don't wanna have to swap all these different components. You just wanna swap the variants. Uh, oh, and then we have a step-by-step -step guide. So it's actually showing us examples as to how this component could, could exist. So we have product onboarding, we have our different steps, then we have this card beneath it, okay? So it's already giving us examples of this component that is in use. So now that we have our step-by-step -step guide, let's go ahead and actually fix uh, the step wizard error. Looks like it's free to fix. We don't burn through any of our credits and we're gonna see what it comes back with. <clears throat> Okay, and there we have our step wizard. So it looks like something broke here where these are out of line. Again, this is why you should, what Polymet should do is actually break out these components into atom components to keep them aligned um, into one larger component. So something clearly broke here. I'm not too sure what this progress bar is, especially if we have that along the top. So I'm not too sure if I would use this in the grand scheme of things, but uh, from what we saw with the step progress indicator, the stepper component itself, and the step-by-step -step guide, which gives us actual sort of looks in the peer and visuals as to how to use these components, I think Polymet's hands down the best AI design tool out there right now. <clears throat> 